So hello, I hope you're doing well today. Um, today's topic is hardened skin and elephant skin, the causes and the mechanisms. Um, as said before, all the videos on, the on this channel work together, so you have the best understanding of TSW um, and all the um, complications and the healing uh, time, etc. if you watch all the videos. Um, so I decided to make this video about hardened skin and elephant skin a bit earlier than planned because uh, I had several questions about it. Um, I uh, am back to the low-tech method <laughs> because this includes uh, quite a lot of drawings and um, otherwise you would have to make animations and I don't have the skill nor the time to do that. <laughs> so this is why I'm back to uh, pencil and paper with this topic. Um, so let's start. Now let's have a look at some examples of chronic hardened skin and elephant skin. This is a lady uh, who has chronic elephant skin on the knee and as you can see very clearly there is an excess of skin and also the top layer of the skin is more thick and more hard. And then we continue to a leg and here you can also see there is chronic hardened skin and then we move on to a hand. Um, also chronic hardened skin and you can see very clearly that the top layer is not flexible so it cracks uh, when somebody moves and this is actually can be very painful and here hardened skin on the same person but on the foot and part of the leg here we can see an example of uh, somebody with chronic elephant skin and some hardened skin on the face so actually this is a really young man and he looks much older because of the condition and you can see that on the face it, the skin looks a bit more like leather the same person you can also see that the skin is quite tight and uh, a hard top layer and this is an example of chronic elephant skin hardened skin of somebody's face now here in this photo the condition might not look so severe but actually this is a very young lady um, so it looks very different, of course, than a healthy skin on a young woman. She looks much older because of her condition. And the severity of the condition depends much more on how long the condition is already there. So, for example, if the state of the skin is already like this for two years, then it's much more difficult to reverse. Or if the condition of the skin is only here for two months, then it's much more easy to reverse the condition and she can have her own skin back. Then we go to an example of uh, two patches of hardened skin on somebody's wrist, in this case um, because of excess scratching. Here we look at somebody's knee and again you can see that there is an excess of skin and that the top layer of the skin is thicker and uh, also harder than normal. Here another case, somebody's knee. Here there is less excess skin, but a very hard top layer. And an example of a hand, and this lady also has it on the other hand. Here again we can observe that the skin, when it moves, it's very easy to crack. The top hardened layer is not flexible. And I would like to thank everybody very much who provided the photos so that I could show very good and clear examples of chronic hardened skin and chronic elephant skin uh, in this video so that we know what we're talking about uh, when we talk about these conditions that can develop during somebody's uh, TSW healing journey. Okay, so then we move on to the mechanism and the causes behind these conditions. Hardened skin and elephant skin um, are conditions during TSW that can occur and that can become chronic. So I first want to say that this is not in all cases chronic. So a lot of people experience um, a, a time during their recovery where they have some elephant skin and this is temporary, um, it heals by itself and um, it goes away completely. So basically it can be temporary and if this is your case, this video is not for you important. But in some cases it can become chronic and people who have this condition, they know it because they're struggling it with this condition often for years. So the causes of hardened skin and elephant skin. 
So first, uh, one of those courses is scratching. And with this, we mean excessive scratching over a prolonged period of time. The second one is prolonged irritant in exposure. And the third one is moisturizing on open or broken skin. So moisturizing on open or cracked skin. So let's have a look at the mechanism. So this is a very simplified drawing of a normal healthy skin. So what you see here is, this is the base of the skin. There are here some uh, stem cells. They can produce new skin cells all your life long. The only thing is that it slows down a little bit with your age. Um, then here you have different types of uh, skin cell layers and then you have uh, the outer skin layer and the outer skin layer is formed of a layer of keratin so and this protects our skin we have something airborne arise at our skin uh, pathogens etc um, the outer layer protects our skin uh, down here you see uh, the capillaries and they bring all the fluid and all the nutrition and oxygen to the skin. Um, so what happens in normal skin if there is a high level irritant? The skin will get some irritation. Uh, this, is, this is our irritants. You can look at the, the video, the, um, the triggers that delay the healing of topical steroid withdrawal. And we also talk about different uh, levels of irritants. Um, but the middle level irritant and the low level irritant, so these are perfumes, air refreshers, and so on, and this is like dust mites and um, um, a glue in the air, or chemicals in the air from a building site or uh, from a new couch, etc. These all don't irritate a normal skin. The skin is can defend itself, the keratin layer is intact. Um, also, you can scratch this skin. So, scratching hand, scratch, scratch, scratch. Uh, this is all no problem for the skin. It doesn't immediately go to bleeding, it doesn't open up. Um, so the normal skin is well protected. Then let's have a look at the skin of topical steroid withdrawal syndrome. So in this case, you can see the skin is much thinner. So here we have again the capillaries, we have uh, the stem cells, the skin cells that go up, 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 and also the skin the upper layer is thinner. So what happens in topical steroid withdrawal skin? So the high level irritants, of course, cause irritation to the skin. The middle level also cause irritation and the low level in topical steroid withdrawal skin also cause irritation. So all these Irritants cause irritation to the skin. And scratching, there we go again. Beautiful drawing of a hand, scratch, scratch, scratch. Also causes irritation to the skin. So when this happens from once in a while, you will notice a flare, a flare up of the skin. And the skin gets inflamed, um, this histamine release, it will uh, fight the pathogens, uh, and so on. But when this happens over and over again, um, from on a day-to-day -day basis, um, what can happen with the scratching as well as with the irritants is that the skin starts to build a protection mechanism, a protection layer. A protection layer of hard skin, and these are keratin or dead skin cells. So this is a protect protection mechanism, and this is what causes hardened skin. So you can see here again a simplified drawing of the skin and this top layer becomes hard and thickened. Because of the prolonged irritant exposure or because of the pro prolonged scratching. And with the irritant exposure oftentimes it's a combination because uh, the irritants uh, cause also histamine release so there's more itchiness and there is more scratching. 
So how do we know that this is happening? We don't know this by observation. So we've seen many, many cases of uh, people with TSW and uh, that um, in their situation, they, um, the skin creates this hard top layer. Uh, we also know this can happen in normal healthy skin. For example, on your hands and feet, you have calluses. Uh, when you work hard with your hands, physical work, then also there becomes a thick layer on the skin. Only the difference is that this, uh, this thick skin on the hands and the feet are, have, have much more el elasticity, so you can move around without cracking. And with a hardened skin uh, issue in topical steroid withdrawal, uh, it's not, it doesn't have any elasticity. So by moving it, it, it can crack really easily. And this is painful. So there are other conditions known on normal healthy skin. Uh, like lichen amyloidosis, you can forget this name, but this is also a condition that is called by scratching. And in this case, the skin makes deposits of uh, insoluble proteins, and also there is thickening of the skin. Another such condition on healthy skin is perigo nodularis, and in this case, um, the deposit is, is because of collagen. So why this happens is not known, not completely understood yet, but we can see it by observation that the skin is make, making this uh, protection mechanism. Um, also, in the case of scratching, we can observe by science that the nerve nodes, which are in the skin, um, become more sensitized. They become overstimulated. So if you scratch over and over and over and over again, at some point this spot in the body becomes more and more and more itchy. So the vicious cycle is uh, stronger. And then we have a look at elephant skin mechanism. So elephant skin is a combination of hardened skin and excess skin. And in this case, the hardened skin feels more like leather, leather kind of structure. But there's also excess skin. Um, so what is the mechanism with elephant skin? So again, we have here the skin in TSW. And the skin is more thin, and uh, in more heavy cases, more severe cases of TSW, the skin is also uh, damaged. It's oftentimes opened, and um, you have been scratching, and uh, it's very impaired. So what happens when you put moisturizer on it? There are, there are molecules in the moisturizer, and this depends a bit on the ingredients, but usually the heavy mo moisturizer is the bigger problem. So the ones with paraffin or with wax or uh, yeah, with heavy, heavy moisturizer gives a bigger problem. So these molecules, they, they can come too deep in the skin. So the creams are not designed to be used on open skin, but on normal skin. During TSW, the skin can be so impaired that the molecules go too deep in the skin. So the skin sees this as a foreign molecule. And what it will start to do is that it will make more skin cells underneath it to push the molecule out. And in this process, it will make hardened skin plus excess skin. Okay. So with a moisturizer, it's, with the moisturizing, it depends on your severity on, of TSW, if it can cause a problem. Like if you're a light case, you have only microflaking and redness, and those people can use moisturizers. But if you are a more severe case, uh, the middle severity and the high severity cases of TSW, they can get uh, big problems by using to uh, by using moisturizers on this on the open and broken skin. So we talk a little bit about severity and treatment. Um, the severity of these uh, chronic issues of the hardened skin and uh, elephant skin are very dose and time dependent. So how uh, much of the moisturizer is being used? Uh, some people have been using heavy moisturizers six times a day, so you can understand that then the problem gets bigger. And also the time frame, how long the problem is going on is important. So if you have elephant skin and hardened skin going on uh, for two months, 
but you stop after that, um, it will heal by itself and go back. Um, but if you have this already for two years, it's difficult to heal. And the healing goes really, really slow. So let's look at the treatment. Well, first of all, you have to stop the vicious cycle scratching. Um, you have to find the irritant, what is causing, uh, if it in your case is an irritant, you have to find what is causing the irritation to the skin and stop the irritant exposure, avoid the irritant, and you have to stop the moisturizing. Now, this is easy to say, but it's very difficult to do, because as I explained before, uh, the spots are usually uh, extremely itchy. And with the irritant exposure, it's often difficult to find what is the irritant. You really have to uh, do some deep digging and investigating to see uh, to find out what the irritant is. Um, a friend of mine uh, who is here in Thailand as well has had thickened, hardened skin on his hands. He was working at a gym, and in the evening time they had to disinfect all the equipment every evening, so he he could find the trigger. It was the irritants from the cleaning detergents that he had to use. And with the hardened skin and elephant skin, because of moisturizing, you have to stop the moisturizing. But this is also difficult to do because this hardened layer of skin, of keratin, uh, like I've uh, explained, it's, it's not elastic. There's no elasticity in it. So when persons stop moisturizer, it will crack. And it can crack till bleeding. And it's painful. It's painful to stop the moisturizing. But you can also understand that when this hard, thickened layer cracks and you put again moisturizer on it, again the molecules can go too deep in the skin in these cracks. So even though it's painful, you have to stop the moisturizing. So then, over time, the skin can get better again. It's a very slow process. Um, treatments that is available is, is the CAP device, so the Cold Atmospheric Plasma uh, Plus Serum. And this can help uh, speed up the healing process enormously. Um, you can find more information later on this channel about... Uh, about this therapy, about this treatment. I'm here in Thailand for this treatment now, so um, I am quite uh, knowledgeable about it at this point. point. Um, if it's for you not possible to get treatment, um, it's also time plus water is a healer. So this top layer on the skin, so this top layer on the skin, you want to leave it intact, so don't scratch it and don't, um, for example, if you go in a bath, you make it the, the top layer too weak and you know that you will rub it off with, it, with your towel or it already happens in a bathtub. This is not good because then you have the same effect again. The layer goes away and it, it, it starts protecting itself again, so grows. So no baths and, um, of course, no scratching, no irritant exposure, no moisturizer. But what you can use is water. And water by showering. Or gently, gentle letting water go flow over the skin. So you don't want to use hard pressure in the shower because also this is exfoliating. So the, 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 the thing is that you don't want to exfoliate it, but you do want this layer to get a little bit more water in it and a little bit more softness in that in it and over time it will go thinner and thinner and thinner so i hope this was helpful for you and i hope you can understand um, the causes and the mechanisms behind hardened skin and uh, elephant skin uh, in chronic situations because it's not chronic in every situation and with everybody so yeah please if you can support this channel it would be highly highly appreciated um, there is a link to a paypal and a link to uh, a fundraiser in the description of this video in the description of the channel and also please like share subscribe so that other people can find this information more easily bye bye